Sup guys, my name is Courtney Budzen and this is What's For Din. Today I'm gonna to be showing you how to make a homemade snickerdoodle. This is one of America's all time favorite cookies. You can't go wrong with making this because I don't know one person who doesn't love these. They're not only real simple to make, but they smell so good when you make them in your house and you open that oven and that cinnamon steam just hits you like a brick wall and it's just amazing. <laughs> so let's go over the ingredients and we'll get started. So you're gonna need some butter, and I'm using salted butter. If you're gonna use unsalted butter, you're gonna need a little pinch of salt in this recipe. Some granulated sugar, brown sugar, couple of eggs, vanilla extract. You're also gonna need some all-purpose flour, some baking soda, and some cream of tartar. Now I know a lot of people are like, why do you really need cream of tartar? But this is what makes, cream of tartar is what makes this not a sugar cookie. It gives it a tartness and a fluffy texture, like a gooey fluffy texture, that if you didn't use this, it would not qualify as a snickerdoodle. That's just my personal opinion, so you know, it is what it is. Then for the coating on the top, you're also gonna need a little bit more granulated sugar and some cinnamon. So the first thing we're gonna do is mix our dry ingredients together. So I have my flour, my cream of tartar and my baking soda. Now it's really important you're using brand new baking soda. I mean, it doesn't have to be brand spanking new, but if it's old, then there's a very high chance that your cookies will fall really flat. If you like flat cookies, then that's fine. But if you're like me and like a fluffy cookie, then it's not fine. <laughs> so make sure it's relatively new. So just mix this with a whisk. So now what we're gonna do is cream our butter together with our sugar both of our sugars and I'm gonna start with a wooden spoon and then move to a whisk. You can do this in a standing mixer or you can use a hand mixer but I just find doing everything by hand it's just it just tastes better because you're making it with some leaven. <laughs> so now I'm going to add my eggs one at a time and mix those in and then once you got the eggs mixed in go ahead and add your vanilla. Okay make sure your vanilla is evenly incorporated and scrape down the sides of your bowl. So now what we're gonna do is add our dry ingredients and I do it in about thirds, that way I'm not over mixing the batter. So I add a little bit and then just fold it in. So now that our cookie dough is all mixed together, I'm gonna go ahead and get everything off my spoon because trust me, you don't wanna waste none of this. I'm going to cover it with some tin foil, just like this. And just kind of press it down, you don't have to have it touching, but. What we're gonna do is refrigerate this for about 30 minutes to 45 minutes until the dough is nice and chilled. And I always say this, with any cookie dough you make, you put it in the fridge because there's something about when you refrigerate the dough, it just, the cookies are better. The butter has a chance to reset and so your cookies will be a little bit thicker than they normally would if you were to just throw them right in the oven right now. So 30 minutes and in the meantime, start preheating your oven to 350 degrees and I'll come back when that's done. So now my dough has finished chilling in the fridge, so I have an ice cream scoop, and all I'm doing is taking a little bit of it, I'd say about a tablespoon measure amount, and rolling it in between my hands. And then I'm gonna place it on a baking sheet lined with parchment paper, and I just slightly press it down. And so you wanna do all of these. So this isn't all of them. As you can see, I still have a little bit of dough left over. But my other pan is actually in the freezer because I like to set them in the freezer for a little bit longer so that they set even better. And the more cold that they are, the less that they're gonna spread out when they bake so they're not gonna be as flat and they're gonna be thicker, like I said before. So while those are in the freezer, just for a couple minutes while we're doing this, I have my granulated sugar and my cinnamon. I'm just gonna whisk this together to get it nice and e oop, <laughs> evenly incorporated. Try not to make a mess, but holy moly, does that smell good. And I like to do it an easier way. Instead of just putting the snickerdoodle in the bowl, I put all of this in a sandwich bag. So all you do is throw your snickerdoodle in, and then you shake it, shake, shake it. Shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it. Look at that, you got a perfectly coated snickerdoodle. And you may think that's too much, but let me tell you, there's no such thing as too much cinnamon sugar. And if you think there is, then we can't be friends. <laughs> so our snickerdoodles are completely covered with cinnamon sugar and they're ready to go in the oven. So 350 degrees, eight to 10 minutes. Now this is the important part. What makes a snickerdoodle good is all about how long you bake it. You do not want to over bake these. So eight to 10 minutes max. And you'll notice that the, the center will be still a little bit gooey, but that's okay because as you bring them out and they're cool, they're going to harden a little bit. 
You don't want the whole thing completely raw, but you do want it to be a little gooey in the center. Put these in the oven and I'll show you what they look like when they're done. When they're done. When they're done. I don't know what's wrong with me, but I just can't talk today, so don't mind my English. I'll be right back, putting them in the oven now. So this is the final result. As you can see, they're absolutely gorgeous. They smell so stinking good. I can't stress enough how good these smell. So if you want this recipe, just look below in the description box. I'll leave all the measurements as well as the written instructions. And if you did like this video, don't forget to smack that like button. And as always, thank you so much for hanging out with me and we'll see you next time. Bye.